questions. You know, I'm, I'm running for mayor because I believe San Francisco could do better. People have more say. Uh, I sit in City Hall all day and I see the same 300 people come in and out who could really influence policy, influence ideas. And really what we need is we need more people, more ideas, more solutions. Because frankly, if we, if we continue to do things the same way, we're going to continue to have the same results. Eight years ago, we had the same discussions. We had Muni. We had homelessness, we had jobs. I mean, it's, it's like every eight years or every four years it's a recycling of the same issues. But yet, oftentimes the results aren't any better. It's always business left out next. I, think, I feel like there's so many voices who are just left out. And many of the voices, unfortunately, that get left out, they've had to move. Or they've been moved out of town. Or they've lost their homes or they've lost their jobs. And I think that it's really inherent on us to make sure those voices are constantly being represented, constantly being heard. So rather than do the traditional model, which is have them have representatives, which I think is helpful, it's a good start. It's really trying to figure out a way for them to speak for themselves. In, in fact, that's why we started Reset San Francisco. So Reset San Francisco is an online community. It's not a website, it's not just a place where you put policies. It's an online community, just like a community center would be, which is open 24 seven, so that you know, after you put your kids to sleep, you can actually go on and be part of the dialogue. If you wake up early, you can be part of the dialogue. If you prefer to do it during the day, you can be part of that dialogue. And it's a dialogue in open, to be transparent, to be um, fully open to have these discussions and talk about um, the economy, talk about jobs, talk about tax reform, talk about better government, talk about muni, to talk about education, talk about the environment, the most important issues that impact us every single day. We're so excited about the response. This last month, we had 100,000 people visit Reset San Francisco. 100,000 unique visitors? 110,000 unique wow. visitors. And how many of them are from San Francisco? A most large, large majority. Wow. I, I want to say like 80, 90 percent wow. from San Francisco. Um, you know, we have over 8,000 friends on Facebook. We have the largest Facebook community of any campaign. Uh, we just did a town hall two weeks ago in Golden Gate Park, the Hall of Flowers, to talk about muni. Talk about muni reform. And what was so great is we had almost 300, 300 people out. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in the room, I didn't recognize 80% of people. And what was really fun is we organized them by bus lines. So we had the Anne Judah folks, Jay Church folks, mm -hmm. uh, Terravel, one California, 38 Geary. And, 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 and we let them talk about what they could do to fix muni, what we could do. Because most of them, we, we did a fun exercise at the beginning where we asked, okay, if you ride muni you know, a couple times a month, stand up. And then people stay standing as we walk through. And the last question is, okay, tell us if you ride muni every day. And over half the room is still standing. So this is the target audience for muni. They are on board. And they want to see it get better. And the fun thing is, many of the ideas say around muni, we already know what the problems are and the solutions thanks to $3 million of the transit effect of this project. Yeah. The, the sad thing is, no one's really done anything about it. No one's done anything about it. We know we need fewer bus stops, but yet every time we talk about it, no one has the courage to really have a citywide plan on how to make community faster by taking away a few bus stops. Because inherently someone's going to be upset, someone's going to have a sound story, and inherently it's very, very hard to do. But if we had the courage to go, to go do that, we could actually make our transit system faster. And our transit system is really the only way the city's going to be able to grow. We're not going to be able to grow if we continue to be dependent on cars. You know, our transit system is going to be key. Bicycling is going to be key. Walking is going to be key. That's the only way we can actually have more people in San Francisco, more people working in San Francisco. Um, what, what's been fun with Reset is it's been a place where we also ask for help. So when our Go Solar program, uh, which is quadruple the number of solar roofs in San Francisco, uh, was threatened to be cut from the PUC, you know, Reset San Francisco, hundreds, you know, thousands of people responded by signing that petition to end up saying, let's stop, let's stop this cut, let's work to save our solar incentive program, which is actually, uh, now we actually have a, a clean tech economy, we used to have two solar companies in San Francisco, four years later after the program's been going, three, three four years later, we now have uh, 30 companies and 450 jobs. We also put a, a jobs component in there, so that if you hire an installation company that hired somebody out of our city build program, then you've got extra incentive to do that. So you didn't have to do it, it's by choice. Basically, if you did, we created 72 jobs for folks that were low income, or people with primarily community jobs, that are now on the ground floor of this amazing green economy that the president talks about. For, for us, Reset San Francisco is not just a campaign, it's a way that you should be governed. 